There is melody in it because the song is not ready. So once the song is ready, this melody will be taken off and I will be singing. Agnello Fernandez, uh, really nice to have you at Salikam. Uh, thank you, thank you, Fred. Musician of many years, uh, recently awarded with the top prize of Radio Mango. C. We'll come to that later. Yeah, we'll do that. I know you now. Tell us about them. Uh, how many years in music? How did it get started? Well, uh, how many years in music? Like uh, it all started uh, when I was a when I was a kid. I can say just about finishing my school in 1974. When uh, a friend of mine called me up and he said, "Can you sing with a, a brass band for?" Uh, they were having a small Christmas dance somewhere in Arpura. Then I said, well, I don't know. I can sing, but I don't know any song to sing with a band. He said, I'll teach you three, four songs, and you can repeat those songs. So, 1964? 1974. 1974. So he taught me those songs, and he just gave me the lyrics. Which were they? Uh, I think it was Proud Mary, Bad Moon Rising, and, you know, another two, which I don't remember. But these two, started, you know, as you asked yeah, me, they came the to mind. Music of our school days. I know, yeah. And then... Uh, then I went and, uh, you know, sang with this brass band in Arpora. There was a, I think it was in somebody's house near the school, St. Joseph's School. That somewhere. time parties were all in people's houses. No? Exactly. And this was supposed to be a Christmas dance. And they were just playing instrumentals and in between they would say, okay, sing this song again. So it was like repeating the four songs uh, throughout the, uh, I don't know whether it was until early morning or whatever. You were how old? I would be about 14 or 15 at the most at, the, at that time. And then, you know, that interest grew in me, like, you know, to, to do something or to get into music and all. So I started looking for uh, similar-minded uh, friends. And I found a boy in Kalangutyo who was, happened to be, now he's, he's a very good drummer. Okay, he played for uh, uh, several bands. But the first band he played for was uh, with me, the Hijackers, which we, he and I, Rosario Fernandez from Kalangutyo. Hijackers is such a name which brings back memories, but uh, we were a little bit uh, junior in, in that age. Yeah, then, now I'm talking about the 75, this is uh, when we, we, att we, we attempted to form the group. So we were going to people's houses, listening to their radios. I didn't have a radio in the house. I mean, in the, in the sense that, you know, the proper radio where we could listen to songs and pick up songs and stuff. So we caught hold of another guy called Alex Fernandez uh, behind the Kalangu Church, he used to stay there. And we were like three of us on bicycles roaming around looking for, you know, somebody with a guitar. On the first the band in Kalangut? Hijackers. First band? Uh, it, I don't think it was the first beat band. You can call it the, okay. the you know, electric uh, instruments. Earlier stuff. bands were traditional. Uh, traditional. There was this, uh, with, that's the one I was talking about, John and his Jolly Boys. Johnson, Johnson and his Not Johnson, John and his Jolly Boys. John and his Jolly Boys, like he had come from Bahrain. He was my neighbor and he had brought a drum set. He was a very stoutish guy. He was a theatrist by nature. And uh, he was the one, uh, like, uh, he started taking me with him whenever they wanted somebody to sing and uh, play the guitar. So how I picked up the guitar was, you know, it was just a three-chord thing that I knew. C, D, G. <laughs> that was the only thing that I knew. Like, I learned from somebody that too. And then uh, I would go and play for their... Uh, uh, what would you say? They played with them for theats, local theats, and and then they asked me, "Can you play with us? Can you sing with us?" I said, "Yes, I can. No problem. I'll pick up more songs." And I said, "That's very good." But uh, what happened? We formed this group, hijackers. Yeah, we managed to get somebody's accordion. Nobody knew to play the accordion and stuff like that. Accordion. Too. Yeah. Rare, no? Very, very rare. Uh, then we sort of just. Happened to get in touch with uh, another Kalangut boy, Ivo Pinto by name. He's yeah, a, uh, uh, yeah he, he, and we got in touch. He had a guitar. He would plug his guitar into a small transistor. In a transistor. In a transistor, he would. I don't know how he would do really? that and uh, sit outside in his uh, balcony on the long bench there, and he would strum. So we were like, oh, like say, hey, some electric sound is coming out of the thing, you know. So that, that's how we got a guitarist. These were the first days of electronic first. music in hmm. Goa. 
No, uh, there were these bands before that. Like they used to have these beam, similar beat shows yeah. and four squares and all. Just about I mean, in the last six, eight years before that. Yes, yes. And then, then Ivo put, uh, put us through to Tito Goy's Provencer. He said he also is learning to play the guitar. Maybe we could turn him into a bass guitarist and something. So we could turn him. I could be. That was the way we, yeah. we made the group up. And then uh, we got in touch with uh, Angelo Pace. I don't know whether you know Angelo Pace. And he also sort of... From also from Kalangut. His house is near the St. John the Baptist Chapel in Umtawado, near Infantaria. Okay. His house is there. So he sort of took us under him, I could say, to, 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 you know, to get us into that group. So how did the group uh, get moving? Was it uh, instant? At, at Angelo, did it struggle? Did it struggle? We struggled a lot. We didn't have equipment. Angelo was uh, repairing radios and stuff, so he would help us, you know, do his little thing with the radios, plug in the guitars through the radios and stuff. Angelo was instrumental in like, uh, like sort of getting the group cemented together. I can see. I see. In his house, we would practice at his place. And it, we were like kids, you know, 17s and uh, 15s yeah. and 16s. And I was the senior most. Uh, like I could say 15 and 16 years old. And the others were but younger, younger than you. Younger to me. They, they were still in school and stuff. So we started forming the group. Then we got a bass guitar made by a carpenter. Really? Yeah. We, we gave, them the sh gave him the shape and he cut it. He, you know, carved it and he, everything. It was done. It was so heavy that Tito was uh, not very tall. He, you know, for his size, like he was sort of getting Small smaller, <laughs> smaller with the weight of the guitar. I can say, but it was fun. It was fun getting the thing. It was like adventure for us to get into that group. And then, what was the music scene in Goa then? It was uh, purely this. CCRs and uh, you know all the the music of the groups. Uh, like, CCR means uh, Creedence Clearwater Revival groups. I mean this Proud Mary and yeah. Bad Moon Rising, yeah. and waltzes and Mother of Mine and all these type of songs. Music which came in by the radio. By the radio. Yeah, yeah, by the radio. Which yeah, radio? Sure. I mean, I, I, this uh, uh, yeah, what, what they used to, they would call it. SLBC? Yeah. Sri, Sri Lanka Broadcasting broad Corporation. Yeah, that's the one. Broadcasting Corporation. And Radio Ceylon or what? Radio, uh, Radio Ceylon, they would call it. And that's what I was trying to get at. But the bands, which were the bands which were popular around your time when Hijackers was just entering the field? See, oh. because Kalangut is at a very crucial stage in the 70s, no? Yes. Yeah. Uh, tourism is coming in in full blast and it is probably the first and most intensely changing village uh, for the tourists. I remember walking by as a kid and there used to be a few discos in some old houses and things yes, like that. Yeah. So, so, but of course the tourism scene was not directly connected with the village because the village was, uh, you know, a, a bit away, you know, part of the village was away from, I'm just guessing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you know, the bands, uh, I, I could say before that, uh, this uh, St. Brito's boy band, what are that, uh, Nini and, uh, and the guys? Yeah, St. Brito's. Uh, uh, it was a band called Dimension, Nine Obli Dimension? No. That was later, I think, Oblivion. Oblivion. Yeah, then they won the Simla Beat Contest. So the Simla Beat Contest was this huge show that was happening in Kalangut itself. Exactly. Once a year in the month of May. May. Where a stage would be set up and all the bands from all over Goa would compete. Initially the stage was, you know, uh, now the tourist hostel. Tourist. That was, I think what they would call it a tourist hostel. Mm, right. Yeah. In front of that, it was an open air. It was like, it was a... That was the stage. Play, that yeah, was that the was the stage. So, uh, yeah, the stage would be... Uh, the decor will be put up there and people would be on the sand yeah, right. facing the east back then it shifted then it shifted towards a little bit in front of royals exactly uh, royals i mean th there also was a stage, stage. concrete, uh, concrete sta stage. built in front of exactly soza lobo yeah bang in front of soza lobo yeah. so then uh, and those are the day, uh, years when we were hijackers those are the years that bands from bombay like uh, underground explosion Oh, that was oh, something to go to and listen to for us. Uh, Underground Explosion, then uh, Morris Concesio and the Dance Band. Nelly, uh, yeah, Nelly and something, uh, a band from Bombay. I don't, I don't remember the whole name. These gay cableros with uh, also... Uh, Emilian, Emilian, yeah, Emilian. they were there. And then and some band with uh, with the singer female singer arunala i mean this was uh, this was a hit band i'm sure we google will find all these names i know these names will definitely be there of the history aruna and all the name sounds very familiar but i can't place it Th those are the bands and we will uh, we would be on the beach whole day and whole night 
So did it influence you all a lot? Did you did it your music did. get shaped by that? Yeah, it did. Especially uh, you know these guys, uh, Underground Explosion. Uh, they uh, the their singer, the main singer, Chris. Christopher was his name. So they used to call him Chris, and he's a short, stocky guy. And uh, like, I was uh, like, you know, amazed by his singing. I like as a singer, and as a, as a, for hijackers, I was only only the singer. I never played an instrument. I see. You didn't I, play then? No, I did not know to play a guitar. I did not I know to play the drums. Nothing. So like, I, every singer that I saw, like, I was like, I have to be like him. I have to. I have to be. Uh, you know. Yeah. I want to imitate him. Hmm. I want to sing like him and stuff like that. And then uh, some of the songs that they would take, like uh, not many that we could do because we didn't have that type of equipment. They had all the best of things from Bombay. coming all the from uh, yeah all the way from and Bombay. And uh, we took a few. S- uh, we started taking a few songs from the groups. Uh, that they were taking, ah. like especially Doobie Brothers, uh, like we were, we were like listen to the music, and uh, the other one was Long Train Running. I mean, these two songs, like everybody started taking because they were doing it, and they became f- hit songs in Goa. So everybody wanted to do the songs and stuff. I remember that those days, and then the carnival dances started happening in the in, in Panjim, yeah, in the late seventies in Panjim. We would go all the way to Panjim. You know, over 10, 15 of us in a single vehicle. Uh, once we got caught up by Inspector Zwarkar, I remember. Uh, we were like, um, yeah, we were, we were like in the... Packed. Packed in a jeep. Belonging to, I don't know, you would know, Felix by name, they had a Palm Felix, Beach Hotel. Felix. He's Who's jeep. in Canada now? Yeah. So we, we were like, uh, you know, with him in his jeep. And Felix was the only person who was supposed to drive because he had the license. None of us had. Nobody else had. But we were about 10 of us in the group. Yeah. And then... But sometimes these podcasts, even if you give them length, no, there's not a big problem. Yeah. It's no problem with length. Because the yeah. files are very small. And uh, it's interesting, no? You're recording history also. Yeah, you know, and the, the, this thing, this incident about... Maurice Concesi was playing, you know, oppo- opposite the, the, uh, the Bombay steamer jetty. That road was closed. And... Once one end of the road was Maurice Concesi and the dance band, and one on the other end of the road, was, uh, you know, this, uh, the enclosed area was uh, Reunion, which was famous then. Uh, yeah, you know, like Frankie and uh, I remember a couple of names: Frankie, Eddie on the keyboards, I think, and uh, Savio, uh, who passed away in Canada from Mapsa, yeah. Oblivion lead guitarist. Yeah. You remember? He he on the lead, and it was a blast. I tell you. I mean, both sides, both the bands, one from Bombay, one from Goa, like, and we were rooting for the band from Goa, like, and just behind the stage, like, and, and then we said, okay, let's go to Miramar, you know, we all sat in the jeep, and we were making a ruckus, we were making a big noise there, so I think Zwarkar was eyeing us, I see. so we got into the jeep, and we turned, and we were going towards Miramar, we come near the, uh, the ferry point, Panjim Sahib, and we see one vehicle chasing us. What, what happened was somebody else was driving. The licensed Felix was not driving. Another person was driving. And when uh, F- Felix saw behind, he saw it was a police jeep chasing us. Immediately, Fe- Felix was sitting outside sort of, you know, yeah. the jeep. Because somebody else was driving. So he pushed him and Felix took over. Zwarkar came to know something was wrong. He started chasing us. And this guy started racing away. What happened? We reached somewhere near the medical college. And this guy turned left. Zwarkar turned left and after us. Again, he turned left. I remember this incident. Again, our fellow turned left. Zwarkar turned left and we ended up in front of a big wall. <laughs> no, no way out for us. <laughs> so, uh, we were caught and, and the jeep was taken away. We were asked to come to the police station. We couldn't even sit in the jeep and go with the police. I see. Yeah, we were asked to go to the police station. Walking. Walking. And Felix was scared. I mean, now what he's going to tell his pop? So, in the middle of the night, uh, Ivo Pinto was there with us. Yeah. And we went to Lubeya's house. Lubeya Bora? Yeah. We went to his house because he was a very good friend of Connected Ivo's. Connected football or, or uh, uh, Yeah. Uh, I think it was Felix's, uh, you know, um, connection or something. So, he came to the police station. He started telling Ms. Varka, you know, it's okay and... and he said nothing doing. Let the boys go, but uh, they are not. They are not going to get the jeep. Let the let his father come and take the jeep in the morning. So, 
that was one incident i remember you know the naughtiness we used to have we used to come uh, come with uh, you know when when we were, we were in the group the band grew sufficiently or yeah we 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 did do okay because uh, we couldn't we didn't have the money to buy the equipment we needed but ivo ivo pinto bought his amplifier and his speaker we made the speaker boxes that time them. money was in short supply equipment was in short supply and you couldn't get things from abroad so all the exactly. you were getting hit exactly who were we, your suppliers we didn't have a drummer so a drum a drum set i mean we had a sorry not that we didn't have a drum we had a drummer but we didn't have a drum set oh god so the drummer used to practice for hitting uh, hitting a box really when when we were at angelo's place practicing we found a small box and angelo didn't tell us what the box was so the drummer was sitting and the on the box on the lap and banging away so next thing you knew uh, angelo opened the box and showed us what had happened it was somebody lp player with that you know the big uh, rotator arm or whatever see. you call it and everything had dismantled it my goodness yeah it, it was all gone yeah, angelo said no worries i can fix it i see. you know you know like angelo was so kind to us about about all this he was into repairs and everything yeah and uh, using his hall our equipment is to when be when you get your equipment from apart from making guitars and uh, no uh, i hope into bought his guitar his parents bought him a guitar and an amp and a from speaker what? No, at that time it was a shop in Panjim, which is still there. Radio Ra- Radio Mundial. Radio Mundial. Yeah. Very uh, next, close to National National Theatre. Th- that is the second outlet. Okay. It, this one, this one was just by Secretary under the Mandavi Hotel Mandavi. Hotel Mandavi. The end of the thing. Okay. Uh, the end and yeah. Okay, okay, it's still there. It's still there. So we could buy speakers there, but you had to make your own cabinets. So we had a carpenter, so he would do. I went into bought his amplifier guitar and a speaker Tito oh, I think uh, had a guitar and then we bought a speaker and made a box with the carpenter and then his father reluctantly I mean he said because he wanted him to study anyways he was just in school at that time and he bought an amp and he told us like uh, you know I'm buying this but uh, no going out in the nights no playing nights and stuff like that could you get the contracts if you all wanted it were there were there space to play or we we did play in the sense uh, shows yeah yeah we did, we did play uh, quite a few shows for the lions club what happened with the lions club and tigers is our lions club helped us with the first basic drum set that we bought lions club of kalangut kalangut uh, they gave and that time like somebody was, was selling a drum set uh, in nagwa was in lions club john baptist Fernandez professor professor professor, professor. and uh, Dr Barbosa and all they were they were uh, like in the committee and so they felt they should help you yeah they they you know the first drum set that we bought was a 250 rupees drum set i'll tell you 250 rupees drum set and uh, then it was like uh, i think it was stored somewhere and uh, we had to bring it clean it up and uh, repaint it and uh, we put we painted it up and put tapes like to make it look jazzy because you know we thought a oh, band should be jazzy and stuff and then uh, that's how we ended up with it and the, the symbols were like you know the old fashion symbols but it was a drum set for us a big thing for us the kid young young kid band and uh, after that uh, like remo and all were already popular uh, they, by then they were big timers they were big time they were big timers like like for the hijackers the first the first few mem- uh, the members the initial members i can say was me and rosario for sure and um, i hope into on the lead guitar tito goes prince on the bass guitar and then we had a rhythm guitarist whose name was napoleon he was the son of sebi the drummer from parra if you remember i don't know he i mean he was a he had his own band there in parra and his son was playing the rhythm guitar i see and uh, after one show the first show we did in kalangut for christmas i think it was 75 1975 he left his for some reason he was going abroad or something like that i know as a young kid and then we did, we had to search for a rhythm guitarist so, so i hope into had already joined dempe college he was just out of the, and that was the 10th standard started and i was in uh, i was my ssc was 11 at 11 classes 
he had a friend in Penjim and he said, I'll bring somebody. I got a friend in Penjim and he's got all the equipment possible that we need. He said, okay, fine then. Who he comes up with is Agnel Krastel. Professor, the teacher? No, 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 no. Okay. Can you guess who he is? Agnel Krastel, the now ace lead guitarist of Goa. Yes. Bangalore. I see. So he, he brings him and uh, this guy, uh, Agnel, was already into, into uh, I mean, learning, studying and doing everything in music. And he brought his uh, 45 uh, watts amplifier, he brought his speaker, uh, speaker box with two speakers, he had his own guitar with tremolo arm. Oh, we were like, wow, we got something really nice with us. This is now late 70s? No, 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 this was hijackers. Late 70s, mid 70s. 75? 75. 1975. Start itself. Yeah, and then uh, we were like very happy. We were getting shows in. We were getting a lot of shows in. I remember the name. I remember it very clearly. Yeah, we were getting shows in uh, uh, Kalamut. Of course, we were doing a few shows for Lions Club. We were doing all the weddings in Kalamut. All the weddings that were happening along the beach, Perg and stuff. We were playing for all the weddings, I could say, in um, Bodhien. Because there was a there was a man working at uh, uh, at our I think um, One second. yeah. She's sweeping there. there is melody in it because the song is not ready. So once the song is ready, this melody will be taken off and I will be singing. Okay. Yeah. Very interesting. So this is this is going to be the next song that's coming up. Agnello, what were the influences of music in your younger growing up years? See, when I was young, when I was really small at home, my 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 dad used to be with, oh, used to work for Aramco, and. Uh, when he came down, he would be dancing away. Like, you know, we had a small, he had brought a small uh, 33 RPM player. I see. Oh, and, the, and then he would just, and his type of music like was all the oldies and all the old songs. And he would just dance by himself, he would dance alone. And like, uh, we, we were like happy people at home. I see. This is Kalanga? This is at home. 60s, 70s, 60s? Yeah, early, uh, late 50s. Late 50s? Late 50s. Still under Portuguese rule? Yes. Late you remember 50s. it? Yeah, I remember those Portuguese soldiers marching by our my house. You know, you know you know, this son's house, no? Susanna, Yolanda's house. Yeah. yeah. My house is, their house is that side, my house is this side. On the Baga Road? No, here. In inside, inside. inside. Where, where Susanna's uh, yeah, yeah. Mu art museum is. Yeah, exactly. Now. No. The original house is here, no. Uh, you go you go from the Kalamuchi, uh, from the, at the Kalamuchi, you turn yeah. right. Yeah. And then, uh, Post bef office. before Palmarina, that main road going to Nagua. Yeah. Before Palmarina, that road going inside, it's there. Okay. On that road. I remember the soldiers marching by. Really? And, and we, as soon as uh, we, heard, we used to hear the, uh, like, you know, they are. Boots, yeah. military boots, you know, track, 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 track. We would run inside view, and because of my parents, my mom would say they are coming to take all the children, naughty children. They were the boogeyman in those days. Yeah, like you know, run, uh, run inside. I remember that, but I don't exactly remember 1961. I was like, how old were you? Five years. And what was the music then? You saw the transition of the music. And at that time, like I would. I mean, I don't know the radios. And at home, we didn't have a radio at that time. You know, early, early I mean, late 50s. Oh, the only music that I remember we were having at home is when Dad came home, he would play his little thing. And then, and then he would uh, dance all the way. And uh, that was it initially, I remember. Uh, that was the, you know, the, the thing of music at home. Amongst the four Kalamud sisters. was a quiet village then, no? Yeah, very quiet, very quiet. And there was no, that road that passed by my house was just a cart road, a, car, a road for carts. You know, that all those stones and stuff. Yeah. And then what happened as, as we grew, uh, four sisters and myself. Four sisters and yourself? Yeah. So we would, uh, after uh, after our rosary, like, you know, we would just, my dad had brought a, a clothes 
cabinet type of thing. Yeah. Metallic one with drawers. One, two, three, four drawers. The top one was small, a narrow, and then was you know the size is different. And the side, like you know, you got that doom, tuk 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 tuk. Like you, know, you could get. A, and I became the drama there. On the on the thing, like you know, stand by yeah. the uh, the thing was to, even taller than me. Like uh, doom tuk tuk doom. And we, we would go on just like. That. And we would sing after the rosary. We would sing before dinner. We would What sing. Kind of music? I mean, anything like that came to mind. Anything. English, Portuguese, Cantonese. Yeah, I think my sister used to sing, but I remember the songs of those times were like "Strangers," "I Need You Truly," "I Do," yeah, all those type of songs, you know, the old time. Old and I know my elder sister Tekla, yeah. this is uh, uh, why he, she, and our neighbour uh, Avil, you know by name, uh, they had a song book. I think I don't even remember what the songs were uh, on the on that book. Did they took down from the radio? Yeah, they took down from the radio. They would, you know, whatever, from wherever they got. But then uh, that was uh, part of this evening session of ours. And then uh, what we somebody taught us, like you know, uh, you know, we used to get those powder tins, yeah, on talcum, and, uh, talcum. talcum powder tins. You know, make uh, make holes on top and put small gravel or something in it. And seal it up with tape and all. That used to be the tambourine. No, those, those so those things. In, in a situation of total scarcity, you had to produce your own music. Yeah, you had to do your own, uh, uh, create your own sounds. You know, uh, think of uh, the sounds you hear on the radio, maybe, and how can we get that sound here at home with nothing? Uh, with nothing. So that that one, that was. Johnson and his Jolly Boys. Any encounter with them? No, only that I, I mean, I was amazed. I was overawed, like with his music, the way he, the, his. Uh, by the way, his one of his musician was my neighbor Lucas Pereira by name. A long time passed away. Uh, J Jazzy Joe. Jazzy Joe. Jazzy Joe. His brother, Lucas Pereira. Yeah, he he played in Delhi, you know, for quite some time. And whenever he was cleaning his saxophone, uh, you know, and putting it back, he would practice a few notes. Run to his house and I know just sit there and watch, like you know what he was doing. Same thing with the John and the Jolly Boys, with whom I started my music. Yeah. Once they started hear the roll on the drum, run to his house and sit and just listen, like yeah. you know whatever. Look at what he was doing. That was like you know the interest that was growing later. Uh, and that's how my band came about. And so, which then, were the other bands you remember of your time? Uh, for me, Hijackers. Hijackers was uh, the the band that I formed was, as I said, myself, Ivo, Tito, Napoleon for some time, Rosario was my drummer, then Agnel Crasto. Agnel Crasto left after a, a season to form his own, own band called the Gold, Gold Dust. I see. Yeah, in Panjim. And yeah, in the meantime, um, Rosario left and joined that band. So we didn't have a drummer. We couldn't find a drummer. I mean, I had to sit on the drums and start practicing. I, see. I did not know a note. I don't know anything at all, like I could say. I had to sit on the, play the song at Angelo's place. Huh? Angelo Pace's place. I would, he would play the radio and I would start drumming. That's how I... Yeah. And that's how I learned drums. I played drums for two years then. Wow. Uh, 1976, 77. And then uh, Tito and I were left because they were going for engineering. And uh, uh, I got a bass guitarist from Panjim uh, and a lead guitarist from Britona. So we still carried on with the band. I for think the still alive till which year? 77. 1977. That was the year, the, I mean, those boys were, I mean, college going first year, second year type of, first year type of guys. And it was becoming difficult for them to come all the way to Kalangut for practice and all this stuff. So they said, uh, we'll call it quits. Like, and I said, fine, done, no, no problem. At that time, Saligam, uh, Renato Fernandez, uh, has, having funds by. Funds, yeah. funds, yeah. Lori's, Lori's elder brother. Elder brother, he's, huh? yeah. okay. So he. Oh, younger brother. Oh. Could be, could be younger brother. Younger one, I think. We call him something by his short form. He's Renato, no? The drummer. Renu, the they call him Renu at that time at home. Yeah, drummer, drummer fellow. Uh, he and uh, Daryl, Daryl. Sequera. Sequera. Oh, fellow passed away very early. Exactly. 
He, myself, uh, the three of us, we didn't have a bass guitarist. We tried a bass guitarist from Salika, one a tall chap uh, with a lefty. Um, Daryl said he wouldn't do much. So we, Daryl caught hold of Abel. Huh. Abel, I think he used to play with uh, Remo or what, I don't know. Yeah. But uh, he brought him and then we did uh, one full season together and we were doing pretty well. We played at the club, we played at the at the church for the Saavs. That's why I said uh, two or three years ago when I first came back. came back, I said 40 years ago, whoever was, was here at the compound, put your hands up. And they were just saying, 40 years ago, put your hands up. Means what? Like, you know? I said, because I'm asking you this because I was here 40 years ago at this very spot as a band, a member of a band. And they were like, all of them were coming. And, you, were you really there 40 years ago at this place? I said, yeah, I was. Uh, same thing at the club, you know. Anyways, that was my second band, and um, I don't remember what Daryl called it. The experiment, I think he called it. Experiences. Experiment. 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 He, 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 I remember something. Yeah. Me. The experiment. Experience was uh, before reunion, I think. Okay. Reunion was experience before, and then uh, reunion and. Uh, okay. so. so we survived here, and then the next thing I knew was, I had gone. F- this was a funny incident. I had gone for Novena in, in uh, TV. And uh, I came home and my mother tells me, you know, there were two guys who had come to see you here. I said, two guys come to see me? I said, who are they? And I, I, at that time I was working already 77 years. I was working for Holy Family School, Pororing. So who are they? No, they, they haven't seen you. They asked me to show your photograph. They saw the photograph and I told them that you had gone for Novena in uh, TV. They said, okay, we'll try and locate him there. So they rode, uh, rode all the way to Thivin to look for me. They couldn't find me. So I came home. I said, okay. And then they said, if they said, if they don't meet you, to come to the drummers. And they are band, band people. The drummer's place in front of Alankar, on, no, facing Alankar on the left side. You got to, there's a staircase, go up there. So I went and asked, I met them there. They said, you see, we are looking for a singer and a guitarist if possible and to. and then uh, and uh, that was it I joined the deep the deep yeah and uh, Daryl and all were not very happy They're saying we'll buy all the stuff we need and this and that I but then uh, they wouldn't let go of me and they started harassing like harassing in the sense like yeah. come and join us <laughs> we are we are already already a band known band all over and this and that we get a lot of shows and stuff so uh, it was there that I ended up in uh, 78, uh, 1978, and then uh, we really played, uh, I played, I played for that band until I left for the Gulf, I left for Saudi Arabia, Uh, I'll tell you the last show that I played with the, with the Deep was 26 January, 1983, 26 January, 1983 was the last show I played with them. And then February 21st, I left. I went to the Gulf. I went to Saudi Arabia. What was the money like, Agnel, there? Was it uh, very tough, a uh, little bit? Uh, uh, for the bands? For, yeah, in those days. I think we, as a five-piece band, I don't know whether it was just a thousand rupees for a for a wedding and a little extra, a little more for the dances and stuff. Mm-hmm. I don't exactly remember what it was. But uh, it wasn't more than 2,500 for big bands like, uh, you know, highly, the topmost band in Goa. Oh, I don't know. That time the bands were Union, the band was uh, foremost. foremost. Uh, then imaginations. Im- imaginations were there very much. Imaginations were there. Um, and, and then there was another band, uh, foremost. Um, yeah, quite a few bands. Yeah. Down south it was Sebi and the Wings. Yeah. And uh, as deep, uh, we played... Uh, Quite a lot. Even so the Badde scene was very different from the Salset and the Tiswadi scene. They were all three different scenes, or did they once in a way overlap? They o- the overlap. Yeah, yeah. We pl- playing yeah. Uh, two uh, two bands together. And that time it was just starting the two bands together for a dance okay. and stuff like that. Non-stop. Yeah, non-stop. Like I remember when I, I when we were the deep, um, we played alongside Sebi and the Wings in Muve for a dance once. We played with Lace, or co- co- Lace were like uh, the Wendells at that time. Uh, and they were one of the best at that time also. Um, we played with them 
for uh, I remember um, black and red ball club nationals they used to have it right Animals, in front Animals, of Animals. yeah Animals. right in front of the club they used to have yeah. it on the ro- by, on the yeah. road there and we played there on the same stage and one side uh, the vandals one side the deep um i remember we played uh, with the impact chris korea by you know his band in margaon at the club harmonia two bands together for a dance then we played uh, with the vandals on one side and the deep on one side at the bps club in margaon uh yeah there was another dance that was held there the vandals and we again and uh, you know that was the time that this thing was coming by and then these three bands four bands five bands started you know uh, i mean it could and now of course bands plus dj's tell yeah. us about your original music you been writing and uh, creating music i did not write music but only lyrics that came to my mind sometimes when i was small uh, writing lyrics uh, when i was small in school the teachers would make me sing for the school drama school or whatever Jesus. little flower jesus high school uh, you know kalangu so uh, i would be singing songs of uh, you know various singers i remember and then uh, a local guy uh, my my friend and my neighbor we were having local theaters yeah kids yeah. and uh, and and we would call it burgan so tiat maya cha moyna i see and, we, and then when the friend would write uh, the the script for the tiat and then we would both sit together opening up our red and so east and all that stuff and write pick up something from there and write uh, lyrics on that i see on that you know read the whole thing yeah and uh, make songs out of it i remember the first song i sang in in a local kids tiat was uh, by by alfred rose that was the first time i ever song sang a song on a stage where people were like you know, people were watching i was not nervous as such but it was a weird feeling like you know like oh, i'm singing on a stage and everyone you know, is listening yeah and then uh, after that we started writing songs uh, on various topics that you know uh, news pieces from the newspapers and stuff konkani especially varan so east was instrumental in giving us uh, this topics to write on I see. whatever i remember when uh, siddharth bandorkar died he passed away uh, and we were about to have this tiyat i wrote a song on siddharth bandorkar I, see. i wrote the lyrics for it and i won't even remember what the tune was like there is the now konkani music has been very responsive to the events of the time no it's almost like a newspaper they respond very fast yeah exactly in uh, weeks if not days yeah uh, yeah that's right that's right so siddharth was of course the son of the former chief minister and he brother of the chief, existing chief minister and he died in this strange unexplained accident exactly so uh, that was um, there was a song i wrote and then uh, i remember the uh, every year we would have it every every may we would have this tiyats and i would be just picking up any topic and, and just writing uh, anything like i remember one year we we sat and i told uh, then that friend of mine uh, he was a priest after that yeah uh, i said edward uh, you know i will write an opening chorus yeah so he said you write and i'll i'll check it later so i wrote the opening chorus he said i don't have to change anything that's fine and uh, we uh, on the day of the drama like i'm happy i'm going to sing the opening chorus like and uh, i i sort of started the thing yeah i started the opening chorus and there was thunder and lightning and heavy rain and the the theater got cancelled that they washed out completely that day and like you know we were very disheartened and stuff and you know, now what to do but then we said uh, edward said we'll have it again we'll repeat the thing yeah you know we'll have it whatever i said how can i sing that that uh, same opening chorus because it was meant for that particular day he said no you change it if you can I so know. i changed the lyrics of <laughs> i set and changed the lyrics even and, uh, like you know it rained and then this are god god and so pause for lo joglaune marle and uh, all that no no and which month was this it was may okay, early early, in, early may early oh may gosh. not expected ah yeah, totally and then uh, you know this was the thing that was happening and i remember uh, after that uh, we even had uh, 
a theater in front of my house like uh, with a proper stage at that time the stage was we used to bring benches and put planks over yeah. that and the planks would fall in some of us would fall down and stuff like that but uh, then we started having in front of my house with proper stage and proper curtains theat curtains and all that stuff you know? and then uh, 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 there was a year where i was playing with the deep i brought my that time there were built in ca- uh, speakers amp and stuff i brought my guitar and my thing and i kept the speaker outside and i was inside like uh, dressing uh, dressing up doing my parts and yeah. stuff but when i was not doing my parts when others were singing i would uh, play the rhythm guitar from inside the uh, uh, inside the thing like it was so uh, so f- so much of fun at that time which uh, we really can't see now then you went to the gulf you spent lot of many decades there and you came I, back I, tell I, us about that did you get a chance to practice your music in the gulf or was it tough on restarting the year did you come back early with the intention of restarting also how was it oh there that is a history for of 27 years i can say when i went to the gulf like it was like work you get up at 4:30 in the morning go to work start work start set 6:30 yes. like we had to do all our stuff and get onto the bus to take you to the job site it was a construction company that i worked for building refineries pipelines and storage tanks and stuff so initially initial 6 months i was on the job site uh, working on uh, on a team uh testing of you know these buildings and st- of all the storage tanks that were built in saudi arabia so for six months i was uh, on the site and then uh, i was uh, i was in the office and then there was absolutely no music at that time except you buy cassettes and uh, yes. cassette player in the room whenever you are there whenever you have the time that was uh, music uh, during those years and then in saudi arabia like Yes, well, on. There, were, there were absolutely no music shows, absolutely no music whatsoever. But there was an Aramco channel. I don't remember. I don't remember what they called it. But anyways, um, where we could hear. I mean, at least I could listen to the radio only on Fridays afternoons after after lunch. That was our rest day. and from 12 to 4 i would uh, put the radio on for the country music because they would play only country music at that time total and uh, that is how i got uh, liking to this country country and folk music uh, which i try to pick up most of my songs here my choice of music you'll find a lot of country music and uh, then i uh, started recording them i bought a double tape deck and stuff and recording country music and playing them over and over again and uh, well, uh, well, uh, then i got transferred to dubai uh, russia for a little bit a few few months uh, that was on a island way up north above Which, uh, japan so we think it's then was still the soviet union no this this uh, and then became russia okay. now in uh, 2004 i see 2004 i was transferred there for on a big project they we were having but then i couldn't survive the climate i i just told them before you put me in a box and send me out you better send me as i am and they were quite upset that i asked to go back they said we have big plans for you f- on this project and so i said no i can't do it i can't uh, that climate was very harsh for me where where i worked uh, for 21 years like i worked in the desert. heat of the yeah. desert like you know and i couldn't take the 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 winter of the north so uh, and they sent me back home and then they transferred and they got me onto a project in the UAE when i went to the UAE then we could get uh, get to listen to music. music and then at that time i could download music i had a laptop i could play I my music and stuff but when i transferred to dubai proper or to the head office there was a time uh, my friend introduced me to this uh, a few hotels where where live music was happening one man band thing that's where i first saw a live one man band doing shows and that was at a hotel in dubai called palm beach hotel and the the, the restaurant right on top was uh, casa de goa i see and this this boy kaji fernandez from navili i think is he was playing so they introduced me to him and then i got talking to him and every thursday i would be going up there to listen to his music that that's where i thought And that was in 2007 i think 
and this where i thought you know when i retire when i go back i'll do this maybe i'll get a lot of music downloaded and i go and play for parties and stuff you know but uh, when i actually retired i came back home in 2011 i came down i had to take a little treatment and stuff after that and i started looking around and i saw there were one man band two man band three man band like and i did not know what to do with my recorded music i said who will want me nobody would so there was a friend in arpara elvis pereira by name he said uh, i called him i had his number because he was teaching keyboards for my younger daughter i said uh, you are teaching keyboards said, yeah are you doing anything in music he said no maybe we could uh, why what do you think i said no i was thinking of uh, do, uh, getting back into the music scene and i don't know what to do because i'm new to the place and i don't know what really goes on he said i'll come talk to you he came back, we sat spoke uh, he said let's buy uh, we'll need equipment i said i'll buy the equipment no issues so we went <laughs> we bought our stuff and then we started practices but uh, somehow we both didn't click uh, you know doing shows i mean doing music together and uh, then i was left there alone uh, with without uh, any other musician and i was just wondering what should i do now there uh, another friend of mine told dominic pereira uh, the keyboard is from saligam yeah the piano, you know jazz pianist he's really good i see he's really good uh, it was uh, him that dominic was teaching her son teaching the violin or something and then there somebody called and you know here and uh, you know he's looking for somebody he said where is his house so from there he came to my house but i wasn't at home i was in parra and i was riding back and my wife call, um, calls me and says some by the name of dominic is here <coughs> i said well i don't know anybody in uh, you know i've just come to go and i don't know anybody no he says uh, somebody spoke to him about you i said okay tell him to wait i'm coming i'm on the way came home and this fellow is sitting there and he said oh you don't know me but uh, He's somebody is calcutta x calcutta yeah Amazing, all the skills that are there. Oh yeah, you know, and uh, he's. I believe you have equipment, and you you like to sing and play the guitar. And I say I don't play much. I said yeah, I'll, singing yeah, I like to sing. I saying I'm a pianist. Do we have? Uh, can we see instruments? So I took him upstairs. It was all set up. He said, Oh, you have a keyboard. I say it's my daughter's keyboard. You know, uh, I don't play. I don't know anything about it. So he sat at the keyboard and he started flying. and like i was shocked i said what am i listening to he saying uh, can you sing anything i said the mic and all, everything was set i had I the whole it. gear i said okay he said what what you can sing i said uh, i think blue moon or something or green green grass of home and, and the way he played i said i'm already in the band here now and he said okay we'll gel together no no issues he said you come you if you have a guitar i said i'll have to buy one I said, well, I'll see if you want to. And the first time uh, after coming home, coming to Goa was my first show was at a place called Sunny Side Up on the beach in Kandoli with Dominic. And the songs that he was singing were some of the songs that I knew a long time back. So I started harmonizing with him. And at the break time, he said, "Arnello, you know what? I have been playing with several guys here in Goa." He says. i'm getting harmony from you which i never got all this time and it's beautiful and uh, we can really hit it together then we started going about uh, scouting looking for shows and stuff so we got a few shows uh, together uh, i was playing with him that at sunny side up then i got my first uh, duo contract at uh, marina durada arpara so that's uh, we played together but then he was like he was a jazz guy he wanted to do a lot of jazz and i was absolutely nothing in jazz and stuff so he, uh, after i think a season only he started teaming with his 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 type of musicians and stuff and then i said now what uh, but i found another guy another guitarist and i st- uh, and we asked uh, agnel krasto if we can if we can team up with his son on the keyboard He said, "Yeah, when we are not playing, you all can play together." They were doing duos together, father and son. So that's how we. I ended up as a trio there. A person called Savio Paul, 
Jonathan on the keyboards and myself. So lead guitar, keyboards and myself, all three of us singing and stuff. So that's how the trio thing started coming this up. This is 2015 or so? Yeah, a little, no, 2012. 12. 2011 was After with Dominic, now, yeah. yeah, 2011 was with Dominic, 2012 was uh, uh, Savio Paul, Jonathan and myself. And then Jonathan said, see, Agnel, uh, I mean, my dad and I are doing shows together, what if we get more shows and all this stuff, how can we handle this? Uh, then he mentioned, why don't you, my dad and myself, uh, do a trial together? I, I said, okay, whatever way, I said, I don't have a problem. I just want to, for fun's sake, I said, it's not for anything. I just want to stay busy, you know, stay active and Correct. for fun. And that's how we ended up together, Agnel, Jonathan and myself. We did shows together, I think, for uh, two or three years. What are the biggest challenges facing Goan music today? And see, as for me, I do, I try to do something different in the sense that pick up songs which are rare and which are, but at the same time which are liked by people which people know pe people can relate themselves to the songs and stuff like that because as I always tell everybody even today I think I told somebody if there are six musicians at a place playing on six different days if we all go and, and play, the, play, the sa play the same songs every day it becomes monotonous. Yeah. According to me, I don't know. Of it course, may not be. Course. And it might be like among the uh, like staff itself. They would say, Are, they sang the song that day. You know, that fellow sang better than this guy. Or this guy is doing that song better than better the way. other guy. Like, uh, it was for me, like, uh, it would be a singing competition on different days. True. Okay, each guy doing his show and then they, and then they judge the person according to the same song sung on different days and all so I said, um, I might as well stay away from the so song. So what's your focus? Country music, as far as possible. Uh, a lot of country music, a lot of Konkani. You tell me about Konkani and a lot of Konkani. Uh, the love for Konkani grew because of Alfred Rose's songs. He's amazing, no? Just too much. As I said, my first song on stage in a local boy, uh, a local kids theater was Alfred Rose's Pie. You know, that was the song. And then I started, we started... How does it go? I don't remember the lyrics, but the tune was like... And then the chorus... It's something like that. But uh, that was the first song on stage uh, in a local theater that I did. And now, as, as I, if I can count, I think I got nearly about 20 songs of Alfred Roses that I, I can do for a show. I see. Nearly 20. And still counting, still more and more to come. Uh, every time I listen to a Konkani song, if I like that version of that particular song, I change, change the version to this. Like, Aung Saiba Pol Thodi there's a song like every Goan sort of knows. And I always, uh, when I start this song, I said, okay, I'm going to do a different version of this song. I mean, it's the same thing. It's the same song, same tune, everything. Yeah. But only the style is different. I, I told uh, Agnel Mascarenhas, uh, uh, Chris was very busy and he's still very busy. So I told Agnel Mascarenhas, the keyboardist who is to play with A26. Yeah. Uh, I said... Uh, See, Agnel, I want this song, but I don't want in that old traditional way. I want a little different. Beat. Yeah. And then I started searching for that song, also, uh, different versions. I found a, a version by Lynx. Uh, I said, oh, well, this is nice. This is a nice way to do the song. But uh, there were a lot of modern sounds into the song. I sent it to Agnel. I said, make something like this, but the... the uh, the scatting and all, we won't do that, all that stuff. Uh, we'll do it a con as a song, continuous song. And then I happened to be on the, on Facebook or something, or YouTube, I guess. And I heard a version by Gonzaga Coutinho. Yeah. 
and i said man this is fantastic uh, immediately a message is shot back to agni i said stop don't do anything he said i have already started i said no stop don't do i see i am sending you another version so i sent him this version and he uh, he himself said agni this is a very nice version to do not because it was going to be easy for him or difficult for him to do whatever but he said this is a nice version to do and i got that version made to the dot i can say uh, to the note konkani and english music in goa today is very different konkani has a lot of originals and uh, you know people are churning out new music all the time english is a lot of covers and there must be other differences also why 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 this i you know i was thinking to myself you know people think that uh konkani music maybe we cannot dance to and that brought to mind a song by um, m boyer and alfred rosso so there's a song i don't i know that like at the each uh, one challenges the other to exactly isn't that will mix will mix and no 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 alfred rose and m boy and i think i got the mp3 i got okay. the mu- the song at home somewhere and then he uh, m boy challenges alfred rose yeah. okay you sing in, in english i translate it in, in different uh, formats yeah. in different styles i'll sing the same tune in konkani and then i remember there is a, even the, at the end of it uh, the song ramaya is yeah, there yeah. Uh, you know and uh, stop the world and let me down yeah, yeah, alfred rose is singing in english and he he sings it in konkani it is a fun thing and he said now like we have to realize that uh konkani music also can make people dance whatever way like i did at the saligaon institute right the three hours or two or two and a half yeah. hours or three hours of konkani music and until the end everybody was dancing whoever was left i counted there were eight of them still dancing towards the end right. of it i mean and then that that's showed amazing, that's, that's amazing. really amazing like you cannot say we can't dance to what konkani music can do no konkani music can do a lot so what's your future what's your future plans what are you looking to what are the challenges uh, look, i'm just uh, sort of trying because this to... award was a big thing i mean radio mango it's really nice and i mean not many people may be aware of what radio mango is doing but it's melena from pada in canada putting out this weekly show week after week of konkani music maybe between 1 and 2 hours and she had this competition and you won the first prize so apart from congratulating you it's also a great achievement and uh, yeah i i think uh, i you know the radio mango thing like i had heard i had heard about radio mango I did not know who was in, uh, to be contacted and stuff, and I didn't have any songs at that time. You know. But uh, I had heard about Radio Mango, as I said, and uh, in the group that we are, Milena, and then I somehow came to know. I don't know how it is that Milena Marcus was uh, was involved with this Radio Mango thing, and uh, once that song of mine, the video was out. I had the MP3, so I approached uh, uh, Goa Radio. I gave my song to them with the undertaking, everything they needed, and uh, I said, "Why, why not uh, send this song to Radio Mango and see if they would be, uh, uh, they would, uh, they would use it to broadcast it from there." So I did not know where to get the contact from. Okay. So what I did is I that name Milena Marcus. Okay, fine. I said. she must be on the konkani group or any of this band group so i scouted the, uh, all the names that were there and i found her contact there i saved her contact and i sent her the message i said i have an mp3 or an original konkani can i send it i have the messages with me still can i please send it she said sure do please and she uh, she got the song there she listened to it and the next thing she told me see you know there's a contest uh, happening and uh, I would uh, want. I would. I'll ask you whether I can use it for that contest. I said, I I don't know anything about contest because I never took part in any contest before, no competition, nothing whatsoever. And she said, No, you don't worry about it. You know, we'll enter the thing. I said, Okay, fine, whatever you want to do. And then she told me that she would not use the song on the radio. I see. Or, or to be broadcast until the competition was done. I said, Okay, whatever. and i forgot about it this was somewhere uh, end of august or something i think i just forgot about it i did not know anything what was happening i mean and I, since i was playing on saturday nights i couldn't listen to radio mango right uh, no. though of course it is recorded also no yeah yeah uh, and then uh, 
And then she said, uh, it's, 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 uh, uh, after, uh, first October, second October, I received a call from her. I got a call from her, how are you and all, everything good and fine, yeah, uh, nice to, nice to, uh, I mean, uh, for you to call me, I said, yeah. I think, uh, I think she said, did you read your emails? And, and I said, no, I haven't been on the emails uh, this past few days. I was busy practicing and stuff. She's saying, you have won the first place. I said, first place? What for? And she says, for the contest, uh, that company, con- Sonka. And then I was, I, I just said, what contest is she telling you about? I said, what contest, Milena? She said, I told you, no, that uh, that song of yours is going to be in the contest. Oh, yeah, I said, yeah, yeah. But first place? And she said, yeah, yeah, yeah. I said, I can't believe this. These are my words. I can't believe this. She said, no, you got to be- believe it. You have won the first place, I'm telling you. And then it was like, oh, uh, wow, okay. Now she says, I've won it, I've won it, I've got to accept. It. Part of the problem is the lack of encouragement for Goan music. What what can be done to, to take Goan music to the next level, in your view? See, uh, as I see, I don't know, I, I know may, uh, there are so many Konkani singers and uh, doing their songs. They they go on YouTube, mm-hmm. uh, they are already there. But uh, I don't know if very many people uh, l- keep listening to the song repeatedly, like we listen to English music. Like uh, we will uh, request English music, and right. we have uh, Konkani request programs, yes, we do. But uh, how many people would repeatedly ask for songs and, like, you know, use those songs for? Uh, the functions, True. Uh, besides uh, Lorna songs, and uh, you know yeah, some the of these songs, yeah, the big names. and like uh, I love Sebi's music, Sebi Fernandez, Sebi and the Wings. He's a uh, he's a friend of mine. I go to his place very often whenever I'm in Margao. I make it a point to go to his house. I see. For the sim- uh, he's such a simple and down to earth person. I must say, for the simple reason that I was looking for a for a song of his which I couldn't find and I wanted to make music and uh, of that song and sing and I, I, I put it on the group, I put a request on the group would anyone have this song of Sebi Fernandez not knowing that Sebi was on in a, a part of that group I see and the next thing I know is uh, I get a message from Sebi and he says call me, this is my number I see I, I called him He's saying, come over to my place, I'll give you what you want. And he directed me to go, uh, to, to his house. That was the first time you met him? Yes. Okay. Uh, that was the first time, now in this case, yeah. for regarding this music. Uh, I I went to his place, I took my driver, and uh, he said, you bring your laptop or whatever, you know, you come over. Went to his place, like I was welcomed with open arms, like I can see, like, you know, so friendly, so open. He took me into his house and then uh, he brought his laptop and put it in front of me, opened it, opened the whole folder and he said, take what you want. I see. His original music. I see. Of his song. He said, take whatever you want. Really? And he said, you can copy the whole folder if you want. Ah. Oh man, I said, these are all the songs that I was looking for. And I said, Sebi, are you sure? He said, take it, take it, take it, just copy. Ah. Just copy and just take it off. I see. And then I copied the whole thing I brought, and uh, of course, lyrics I could get uh, get from the songs themselves. I listened yeah. to them and take it. I couldn't bother him with more of all that stuff. So he gave me that whole folder, and I started using his songs, and it was fantastic. Like you know, I felt so. I don't know what it was like. You know, I said this man is like just call inviting me. He's saying I'll give you the song. Then he's inviting me to his house, and then he's giving me the whole works of his songs. Now, even lately, he's, Sebi has come out with a song called uh, Nas Nastale. Latest of his, where the music is done with top, some of the top musicians of yeah. Golan. He gave me even that song. Uh-huh. Even music for that song is with me and I do that song. And I tell you that uh, those songs of his are really, really like danceable. Nobody can deny that. So it's a long journey, Agnello. It's, a, it's really been a long journey, and uh, you've taken so much time to to reg- to uh, note some highlights of it. I'm sure there's a lot which is still unsaid. 
but uh, i'm really grateful for i'm not going to stop that's one thing i can <laughs> say i uh, and another place that uh, sort of really encourages me to do what i'm doing and especially for konkani and stuff is casino motels in porvori the owner jack uh, fernandes he says tu am somare these are his words okay. and uh, i even told him i said jack you know something if i have to stop music for any reason due to illness or due to problem that i i cannot to uh, play the guitar or cannot sing my voice over there i said the last show will be at casino motels there's there are few I, places which promote uh, goan music in that sense exactly. we need more of those we need more and there's another one coming up is this dasia in porvori redemptorist redemptorist what are they having there oh uh, uh, you you must come with me one day and see the place and he is also you know, just yesterday he spoke to me i was with him he said i really want to do uh, father norona uh, I think Norona no, yeah this is this this person this priest who is taking yeah. care of this side is uh, Father Gregory Norona Gregory Norona uh, Norona yeah, yeah. okay and uh, that place where you can have it's a it's an enclosed place i have pictures of that place it's so green so lively there's a huge stage up there there's it's covered you can put chairs like for a concert for a theater a small theater and stuff like that um, i played there for somebody's uh, birthday Uh, a couple of months ago and they all liked the music that they were like a uh, defense colony people the housing board I people see. and all of that and they asked me are you free for this are you free for that are you free for the 31st are you free for the 25th i mean they like the music so much that uh, tomorrow again tomorrow afternoon i'm playing for for somebody's birthday so function so this is a this is a space the dasia where 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 is being held yeah being. and uh, they are having a Sunday market it seems for yeah, quite a few years. Yeah, yeah, I've heard of that. And he he told me, Agnello, I want you to play here for the market day. I see. I said, Father, Sundays I'm playing. Okay. I'm playing from twelve thirty to four. Okay. Uh, he said, After that, uh, if you don't mind, I said, Father. So they have it. They have the market every Sunday. Every uh, once a month. Once a month. What so, time? Uh, the, from f- from four to ten, he said. From four to ten. So now what is happening is this on the 6th of November he was he said Agnel I really need you I said father see I'm finishing it uh, finishing panjim at 4 uh, uh, he said you can come directly there I'll give you a room I'll give you you can freshen up and all you can play from 7 to 8:30 or 9 o'clock whatever but I really need your music here so on the 6th so I'm mm-hmm. doing uh, doing the music there for him and tomorrow I'm doing a birthday party there and on the I wish there would be more venues and more appreciation for the Goan musician in that sense. No? And uh, Father did mention yesterday. I really want to do uh, uh, keep this Goanness and Goan culture going. I met him here. Come for one of our programs also here, the book exhibition and things. Okay, like. okay. Interesting. We need more such people. Mm. On that note, thank you so much yeah. for your time. Yeah. Well, thank you for your. No, no. We must. This. We must. Maybe this is the start of a conversation. We need to carry it on. You need to record much more of your memories because these things are important. No, I think it tells us. Uh, history of our times yeah right from the time we started to where we are now and thank you thank, thank you, you so very much, much. great i hope everything won't be on poor poor